Hello everyone, in this video we are doing unboxing of a fitness smartwatch and I bought this watch for my wife uh, simply because I myself have a Garmin Apex 2 smartwatch right here that I'm wearing and I love this watch so much and uh, I thought my wife also deserves a really capable watch from Garmin and that's the reason I bought it. So today I'm gonna actually just opening up the box um, just take a look at the physical features of the Fenix 9, the Forerunner 955, which essentially have pretty much the exact same feature set as the Apex 2, but at a much lower cost. And uh, I bought the white version, uh, comes with a white silicon band. And uh, the watch is again extremely capable. Garmin probably uh, put pretty much every nice fitness feature into this watch and also i bought it on sale on amazon um i think a couple days ago it was selling for 440 dollars uh compared to its original msrp of 500 dollars plus tax which is again a great deal for what kind of feature that this watch um does for you okay let's take it out of the box so a nice foam padding over here. Um, I'm assuming the charger and everything is probably under here. Yep. In its self-contained box, you just gotta pop it out. This is everything in the cam in here. Okay. So we're gonna put the box away and just take a look at included accessories. So interestingly, um, they give you this little piece for locking on to the watch which by default came with Garmin um, already attached, but apparently on the 955, this is optional. So my thinking is this watch, even though it's got a 47 millimeter uh, watch face, just the exact same size as the Apex 2, um, I feel like this color and the setup is kind of more geared, set up geared towards um, lady users. So, for for women who loves a lighter more i guess feminine color um the 955 is actually a much better choice because apex 2 only has one color choice which is black okay so um definitely take that into consideration the again as i mentioned the only difference is the material of the watch dial and uh um, the uh, also the watch back and the different display technology. That's pretty much the only difference. So um, the Apex 2 actually uses a OLED display, which actually illuminates on the backside uh, always. So it's like a L LED, LCD technology. Um, it uses quite a lot more battery, uh, but the screen brightness is slightly, um, it's more bright. Um, so that's why, as you can see, I don't have always on for, for this watch because it just drains, drains batteries much, much faster. The Phoenix, uh, I'm sorry, the Forerunner 955 um, actually uses the trans reflective display, which means um, in the bright sunlight, you don't need any additional backlighting. It actually displays super crisp during bright lighting conditions. The only time you might need the backlight is at very dark places where you need to take a look at what the watch was displaying. Um, so I'm gonna just remove the film on the top and I would actually highly suggest you guys do not buy the solar version because the solar version actually featured a less transparent glass because uh, they build the solar technology on the whole surface of the glass so it actually qu reflects quite a lot more compared to a the um, the Forerunner 955, and even for the Apex 2, which uses sapphire glass, which is a type of a ceramic glass, uh, the reflection is gonna be worse compared to the uh, the Forerunner 955. Um, the 955, of course, uses mineral glass, which generally offers the best light transmission compared to all the options that you have from the Garmin side. And why I say it's the, the solar is really not necessary is because the 955, I had a, a Phoenix 5 before, um, 
the battery actually lasts forever. Like there really is no need for additional solar capability. And if you love a better display, the 955 without solar is gonna be your best bet. Again, contains every single important feature that Garmin um, fitness smartwatch should include. It's all here, okay? I'm gonna turn on the, the watch and we're just gonna take a look. This is probably the power button. Just gotta figure out how to turn it on the first time. Okay, right here. So the watch is turning on, and right now there's no light, there's no backlight lighting up. It's just the trans reflective display. As you can see, um, very good crispness, like the resolution is, is actually excellent and uh, um, very, very bright. As long as you have any kind of light source, it's bright, it's, it's readable, it's excellent. So if I click it, you can see the backlight actually come up. And again, this is for dark conditions where you need the backlight, very legible. You can read it anywhere you need to. There really isn't any concern uh, as, as to the, the clarity of the screen. It's, it's good. I mean, it's not as bright as OLED, but again, the battery sacrifi sacrifice that you're gonna take from the Apex 2 is I would say um, over twice, it's gonna drain twice as fast as the Forerunner 955. So you're not gonna charge this quite often, okay? Even if you use it daily. Uh, it asked me if I want to pair with a phone, so I'm gonna actually just grab my wife's phone and quickly pair it, and we'll start from there. So what you need is actually the Garmin Connect, um, which is an excellent, fantastic app, okay? Um, uh, by, by the way, I forgot to mention about accessories. You just have a USB charger right here, uh, pretty standard. You can use this to charge both the 955 as well as the Apex 2. Most of the Garmin's high-end char uh, smartwatch uses the same charger, okay? Uh, important safety information and a quick start guide over here. Now the watch itself, if you explore the manual fully, it's, it's actually pretty easy to get used to. The manual is actually very intuitive, okay? So it shouldn't really take long to get used to it. If you guys are interested in the full functionality of the watch, um, go watch the DC Rainmaker um, complete walkthrough setup videos. Those are very comprehensive. I love the guy, he talks about Garmin watches in extreme detail. So I'll spare you the setup and everything else. We're just gonna take a, a quick look at the general function of the watch once we finish pairing the, the watch, okay? So obviously my wife had a Garmin uh, Vivo Active watch before. Unfortunately that watch broke, so that's why she right now uses a Fitbit, which is definitely not very reliable in terms of fitness features uh, and the sleep tracking right now I feel like Fitbit is actually also lacking behind Garmin because they really haven't improved any of the functionality of, of the Fitbit's uh, native app. All right you guys know what's cool um, once I logged in it actually automatically detected this watch right away it also recognized the color of the watch which I thought is is you know very thoughtful okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and connect. And I didn't even hit anything here. Basically, I just need to pair and enter the, the numbers. So it would finish the pairing process by itself. Very intuitive, very, very easy to set up, okay? And basically asked me if I want to use 955 as my preferred activity tracker. My old one was the Fitbit. So I'm gonna say yes. So if you select that, the Apple Health and Fitness app is gonna track based on Garmin as opposed to Fitbit as the main fitness tracker. Uh, the next couple of steps is set up your preference, your user info and your sleep pattern. So the watch will try to stick and figure out when you go to sleep. As you can see, um, it's very, once it's connected, it's already started to send push notifications. Uh, this is the email, basically I just finished registering the watch to my wife's account, and now it asks me to get started, whatever. You can clear this by just hitting clear, and it goes back to this 
you know, user interface right here. Very, very similar to the Apex 2, okay? You can choose different watch face, and if you slide down, it gives you a comprehensive list of uh, data that you like or you want. Extremely customizable as well. Like everything here I have personally customized, so this watch is fit to my needs. And for my wife, I'm gonna actually later on help her to just get through, um, you know, uh, set up, set up process so the watch is very customized to her needs. And we'll just take a look at the basic included, um, you know, widgets that what Garmin thought you would be interested in seeing. So the watch cams pre-charged to 88%. It's gonna last for more than a week, but tonight I'm just gonna let my wife wear it, go to sleep, uh, and just start gathering basic health info because for the very important and very nice feature that Garmin now features is the HRV status. That status measures your heart rate variability. Um, it's a very good indication of your current health. And uh, for that HRV to populate in this watch, it takes about uh, at least three weeks of gathering data to establish a baseline, which is kind of important for your HRV status. So um, it's right here. Right now it says no data because my wife hasn't you know, really started using this watch yet. Um, one important thing and one huge improvement that I want to say to everybody if you're interested in Garmin is you really should get the 955 compared to the previous generation of the smartwatch is because they finally they finally used glass elements uh, for the heart rate sensors. Um, the previous generation before this the 954 and everything before that used a epoxy uh, acrylic um, I guess kind of a compound to cover this area and that compound is very prone to scratch and eventually deteriorating. I actually made a video on how to polish that deteriorated compound on those old uh, Garmin heart rate sensors, but this one, it's made of glass, same as Apex 2, which I think is a huge improvement because it doesn't really get scratched that easily. So that's a reason that I think everybody at this point looking for a feature-rich rich smartwatch should really look into 955. If you want to watch with slightly less capability, with no mapping capability, you should take a look at the, I think the 255, which actually also features the exact same heart rate sensor, the newest generation that had a glass back piece, which is, again, I think is more important for data reliability in the long run uh, to track your heart rate and every other data, okay? That's one huge plus that I would say, shout out to Garmin for finally improving the you know, the compound on the heart rate sensor, which most other manufacturers already switch to glass. So I guess Garmin has finally realized it's important to have a reliable, non-scratched back surface for reliable heart rate data, okay? All right, so back to the watch. So um, again, if you want a comprehensive watch features, definitely go check out DC Rainmaker's watch review for this particular watch. Otherwise, um, I want to just quickly compare, since I told you guys, if you guys doesn't care about the watch face, doesn't care about the look of the watch, and you just want a feature rich, the most feature packed watch from Garmin, you should pick the 955, okay? Um, it's a no brainer. It pretty much has everything that Apex 2 does, uh, does have. Um, Comparing the screen right now, I'm just you know showing you the screen difference. The extra money you pay for the Apex 2 goes to shortened battery life, but a more bright screen brightness. Okay, so that's the only thing you're paying, and also the additional gimmick of titanium, supposedly titanium coverings for the top and the back. However, look on the center, it's still plastic. Okay, so it's more for look and marketing as opposed to functionality. I think the 955 represents the best value for in terms of the, the feature uh, richness from the Garmin side of the fitness watch, okay? But in terms of everything else, guys, exactly the same. There really isn't anything different. Um, the 955 doesn't have a quick connect watch band. So 
it's kind of it's gonna be tricky if you work work if you worked with watch before you know how to quickly remove this basically you just pry this and you use a little tweezer it's very easy to come off but for people who have who have never worked with watch before uh, watch band before the Apex 2 is gonna be a much better choice because it does feature that quick disconnect where you can replace different watch bands for the watch but again you're not losing much here um, you can easily remove the pin reuse the pin and change to a different band okay but that's the difference and the price you pay for a little a little bit extra convenience all right um, other than that you still got the exact same three buttons on the left side two buttons on the right side the button function is exactly the same they all have contactless payments they all have music functionality um, pretty much everything is exactly the same okay only difference guys is the screen the look um, and uh, that's pretty much it um, and again I'm probably just gonna actually put this in here so it's got a little more secureness to the band I would assume let's see where is this one go so it actually goes to the inside right here I don't know why it's not actually putting there I guess if you want a more secure fit you should definitely have this installed okay so I'm just gonna put it in here but I guess Garmin is telling you okay guys so this is optional you don't really need this extra secureness but you can have it but oh um, I'm I'm a little confused actually because I just realized this one has a little locking tab and this one also has a little locking tab so this is actually a spare it's it's really not like the Apex uh, where I guess it's slightly larger they actually do give you two different bands one that doesn't include a locking tab and one does okay so I was wrong okay so you don't really need that and in terms of the length of the band as you can see um, exactly the same all right so I hope that answers some of you guys questions um, should you get the Apex 2 if you really dig the screen you have been using OLED screen for a while and you, you just cannot go without it uh, definitely go with Apex 2 but you're gonna be paying for a lot more premium for that screen the titanium and the sapphire glass whatever um, for the guy that looks for the most value the Phoenix the Forerunner 955 is definitely definitely the way to go like you're not missing any single feature that the Apex 2 has okay it even has power meters so like uh, my next step is I'm actually gonna be selling the Garmin 1040 which I bought exclusively for cycling because it supports the power meter it's got the map but guess what the 955 it's got the power meter capability it's also got a full map let me let me just see if we're able to use that map just really quickly they should have a map somewhere here um, uh, just look at the crazy the crazy amount of fitness options you can do it's like endless <laughs> which is crazy uh, I want to find the map okay right here navigate I'm gonna set it as favorite and let's go check out the map the mapping capability just quickly right here all right so obviously it hasn't locked yet um, uh, oh okay okay I guess it doesn't work this way I I gotta actually I gotta actually okay use map so that's that's a feature I want to use uh, press for more controls okay got it so press it you can switch between there are three little dots you can switch between zoom in zoom out going up and down um, if you don't like the touch fun function or if you disable the touch function and going left and right this is for if you again are not used to the touch but look at this guys like the touch is it's very very sensitive and uh, I don't know if it's got okay so in terms of zooming and zoom out you're you have to use that plus and minus otherwise um, you have full touch capability you can just zoom out really quick and then move around um, Wow I'm really really surprised by the responsiveness of this map and again you can load all kinds of different kinds of maps I got to figure out where this map was defaulting to
somewhere, right? It's just like, it's got so many levels of the detail. Um, you can just zoom out like, I feel like you can just zoom out forever. Unless that's the largest you can zoom out is 0.2 miles, right? So, okay, I was wrong. Plus and minus sign is actually not activated on the screen. You have to press this button to actually zoom out. I was like moving over here, it's actually moving the map. So <laughs> that's why I was a little confused. Okay, so where is this? We were in Canada and it was defaulting to the headquarter. I want to just check out um, what we have here in Miami. See the level of detail that you can get from this map. Zooming a little closer for you guys. Like, yes, it's fully featured. You're never gonna get lost with this watch and the battery lasts forever. So you know what I'm talking about? Like with this watch, you're gonna feel safe. If you are out in the wild, if you're in a city kind of lost, you always know where to go. You always know where to go. Again, very responsive, no complaints, and I haven't even updated the firmware yet. If I update it to the newest firmware, it's gonna be more stable, it's gonna be more... Look at that, trail map and details, it's all there, okay? And I'm telling you, the map is actually, it's very crystal clear, like the resolution is surprisingly good. You're not missing much by the difference of the OLED, and uh, the trans reflective screen it's all here and again if you guys are comparing the phoenix 7 series i would say don't even you know think about phoenix 7 just get this one and you're gonna save a couple hundred dollars uh from the the only difference of the screen the the, the material of the screen and the material of the front and back casing otherwise exactly the same okay so guess what guys uh my wife is actually uh tried this watch for a few days and in the end we actually decided to return the watch um for a couple of reasons first um there is actually um issue with the move bar so we set up the move iq uh correctly and uh or the move alert so supposedly after you've been sitting for a while it would actually tell you to move that setting is enabled it ever did that it never notified my wife to move and I want to test on my epic uh, epics 2 and I turn on the move alert and it's been a couple hours and I did sit for quite a long time it never alerted me to move um, so we don't know if it's a bug or not, but it's actually an important feature for my wife um, So that's one of the reasons that we decided to return the watch um, Another reason is that she find that the touch screen is not as sensitive um, Sometimes like sometimes if if she's trying to slide down or slide up um, It just doesn't perform that action and you have to try it for a few times Obviously, now I want to dis demonstrate for you guys that it actually works fine. Um, so I don't really know. Um, the watch, also compared to the Apex 2, I actually wanted to set up the Do Not Disturb on one of the hotkeys um, on the watch. However, Do Not Disturb function is not included in the hotkey options. So I don't know if it's a bug or it's a difference between the Forerunner 955 or the Apex 2 but it is not there. So if you have been bugged by vibrations from your text message, your phone and your apps, you just cannot quickly disable it. You have to go to the quick functions and then score to do not disturb to turn it on, which is really annoying, okay? It's a lot of clicks. And on the Apex 2, I can just press one button and do not disturb to be enabled. So that's, that's that. Um, but unfortunately, we can't really test the, um, you know, the HRV status and a whole bunch of workout uh, functionalities because my wife hasn't uh, wear it long enough for it to populate those data. But if 
move IQ, if like move alert is important for you, um, I think it's kind of buggy. I, we don't know why it's not working. Um, the Fitbit actually does a much better job. And another feature that my wife really hates, uh, or I guess it's actually a limitation between the Garmin uh, app compatibility with iPhone, because um, you can't really designate which application to turn on and turn off notifications. For example, if there is one application that um, we receive uh, quite a lot, like WhatsApp, you want to disable WhatsApp, but let every other app to uh, alarm to go through, you can't do that on the iPhone. It doesn't allow you to do that. In the Fitbit, you can customize each individual applications, but for the Garmin app, you can't. Um, from what I heard, if you have an Android phone, it's not an issue, but if you have an iPhone like us, um, you can't really customize individual app alert and notifications. So that's that's another reason that we're gonna return this watch. Hopefully those issues will be resolved next time if my wife need, needs another watch. Her current watch is a Fitbit Sense, and we just feel like the Fitbit Sense, even though functionality-wise is fine, we've had a lot of problems with its reliability, like breaking down and restarting and getting, fro getting frozen. So, you know, give or take. Sometimes Fitbit works better, sometimes Garmin works, be works better, but in this case, Fitbit actually fits my wife's needs better. And uh, so this is the conclusion of the 4Runner 955, I guess, unboxing and final um, reason why we return it. Uh, not because it's not a capable watch, but only because some of the application very specific to my wife just doesn't work out uh, for her. Okay. So again, if you guys have any questions in regards to this watch, feel free to ask us in the comment section down below. Otherwise, I hope you found um, it helpful. And if you did, please do hit the like button or subscribe to our channel. And uh, um, thank you so much for that. And we'll see you in the next video, okay? Take care.